Hi, and welcome to the end of the financial road part two. So in this uh, video, we're going to continue from the previous one where I put the case forward for the forthcoming financial crisis. And uh, just before we start, I would also like to point out that everything in this video is uh, based upon my own research and it is presented as uh, educational for those of you who are actually viewing this. This is what I'm doing, but it is certainly not a recommendation. As I always say to people, do your own research, double check the facts before you even consider doing anything and then take your own opinion and judgment in applying it to uh, how you interpret the information and also uh, in invest with that information as well. That's uh, what I do. I don't take anything for granted. I continue to do the research, look at the facts, look at the figures and then come to hopefully a uh, objective uh, view about where to invest and uh, so on and so forth. So just so that you are aware of that, it is important that you do your own research and back up the facts as well. Based upon that, what we're going to do is look at how we can uh, profit from this uh, financial crash, uh, which is uh, en route and uh, the sort of financial mayhem that is going to uh, be coming down the line at some point, whether it comes from the Deutsche Bank derivatives or wherever. I mean, nobody knows where it's going to come from, just that there is a sense in the industry now that there is going to be an issue. So based upon the research, what I have uh, discovered, it would be good and wise and prudent to become your own central bank. Uh, number one, that's the first thing uh, to take or to look at uh, and the steps to take. The second is uh, to also look at being able to benefit from not waiting for the financial crash but also benefiting now by either spread betting trading or whatever method that uh, you currently use in trading the current bubbles that we have whether it's the bonds the stocks and uh, also of course the potential move in the metals market. So they're the they're sort of a two-pronged attack you know be, be insured become your own central bank and I'll come on to that in just a moment why I say be your own central bank and then also you can still take advantage of what's currently happening in the market before the collapse and then obviously uh, subsequent to, to when it happens how to take advantage of that as well. Like I say this video is just an overview really of uh, what uh, I am currently doing and you know just some thoughts and ideas for you. So the first thing is to become your own central bank and uh, why why do I say that? Well, the central banks obviously control the markets and also uh, rig the markets and had a major influence on the markets, printed trillions as we've seen before. So they're doing a pretty rum job of it. But one thing they are certainly doing is uh, losing credibility uh, because as a result of this, we've not had a recovery. We've seen that uh, there's been no end to the recession. Interest rates are continuing to move lower. That's not a sign of uh, a recovery at all. And uh, this uh, loss of credibility is also being signaled by the mainstream media now as well. So the question is, what have the central banks been doing to protect themselves against this uh, grand experiment that they have been playing with for the last eight years? You know, the printing of money. And even as uh, Lord Rothschild has said, this is the greatest experiment in monetary policy in the history of the world. But the central banks, even though they are losing credibility, they're not stupid. Um, that's a certain fact. And what they've been doing is acquiring lots of gold. As it says here, all that glitters is gold and silver. As we move on to the, uh, again, the main news headlines, you can see that central bankers have been buying gold with vengeance. They've been doing this. They're buying the most gold in 50 years. Saw all of these headlines, wanted to check it out and then uh, got this from the World Gold Council report for 2015. The 2016 report is now as I'm recording this. But you can see in this graphic that uh, central banks have been buying gold in order to hedge their position based upon that the QE, one, doesn't work, two, it fails miserably, and three, collapses the whole system. So the central banks come up smelling of roses. So there's the first clue, really and uh, begs the question of well shouldn't we be doing the same and the answer to that is of course we should so during the last uh, eight or nine years as we're well, sorry well, it's not nine eight years uh, we've seen central banks buy more gold than they've ever done since uh, the 1960s 
We've also seen a rapid rise in the gold price during the 2008 to 2011 when they were printing the first round of QE money. And they did this for a reason, and that was because or the, the price of gold actually increased uh, based upon the fact that all of the money that was printed would actually be inflationary and there would be massive inflation, which in fact they never got and they're desperate for. So the price of gold shot up, the inflation didn't come, and the price was actually slammed back down. Of course, in assisting with manipulating the price, moving the price lower, because if the central banks are buying more gold and uh, silver since uh, the 1960s and have been, as you've seen from the World Council, or the World Gold Council there, then it's handy if you have a few uh, to assist you with manipulating the price down. And I've said for years that the price was manipulated. It didn't make any sense whatsoever that it was uh, sold off in 2011 all the way down to where it uh, found a bottom in January of this year. And then during this year, in uh, September and also, I think it was August, uh, Deutsche Bank were found to have manipulated the price of gold and silver, no surprise there, along with Scotiabank, HSBC, and uh, one or two others as well. So the grand manipulation of moving the price of gold down, of course, assists with the central banks being able to buy it a lot cheaper. People don't want it. It's becomes on, it comes on the market, and then they can actually acquire it because they know that their grand experiment is going to fail at some point, and then they are suitably hedged when it does. So the question is, how high could uh, the gold prices go when we see the financial collapse? Well, that's not a question that I could uh, personally answer, but there are plenty of experts out there that can actually answer this. And the same question, obviously, I have asked of silver prices as well. So let's have a look at some of the experts and see what they have to say about it. Mr. Jim Sinclair, also known as Mr. Gold, has been trading and uh, been in the gold market for well over 50 or close on to 60 years now. And in the interviews that he's given in the last 12 months, you can see what he has to say there, that uh, gold and silver will be your only lifeboats, warns Jim Sinclair. Jim Sinclair, silver will be gold on steroids. Uh, Sinclair, gold will be $50,000 per ounce. And also Jim Rickards, who's uh, been on C CNBC uh, in June of this year as well. He's talking about 10,000 gold. And again, you can see that also in uh, Zero Hedge. And it's not just uh, these two. There is uh, David Morgan, uh, Peter Schiff, David Stockman, who worked for the Reagan administration, and uh, Alastair McLeod, all saying the same thing. And again, you only have to look at the price chart, look at the background, and you can see that... Uh, why this is going to be the case it's incredibly undervalued given the situation if they continue to print and then they do get the inflation and the hyperinflation they want then you're going to see the price of gold and silver rocket and as any financial advisor will tell you it, if you want to any sort of protection against inflation and against your future investments especially when you've got bubbles in the stock market and bond markets then when they actually burst of course everybody will move and switch to the gold and silver and that hedges any potential losses or small gains that you would get in the other bubbles. So it's a it's something that's been done throughout history that uh, a lot of the wealthy people in the world will own a certain amount of gold and silver to hedge against their investments. It's uh, not rocket science, it makes perfect uh, sense there. And this is something I've been doing since 1993. This is an old uh, statement when I traded uh, with a brokerage company in California called Opportunities and Options. And you can see from this that I was buying silver way back then when it was about four to five dollars an ounce. So ridden a couple of the big waves in the silver market and then positioned also again this time in order to do so. But slightly different this time. Uh, in 1993, I was uh, buying options in the silver markets uh, further out options and then uh, obviously taking just the premiums but this time uh, slightly different because uh, i've taken advantage of actually acquiring some physical metals as well and again i will talk about this in a further report where i'll go into detail about uh, how i did that but this just to show you again this sort of uh, broad sweeping approach of how to handle the sort of the bigger picture as it were and a two-pronged attack in actually uh, being able to play these uh, trades as well. So one is owning the, the physical and then the second of course is being able to uh, uh, take advantage of 
the asset bubbles as well. So there you go. So you can see they've been trading the options markets uh, since 1993, but also do uh, other things as well now, such as uh, the, the, the sort of thing. It was the 2000s, maybe no, it was earlier than that, the 1990s, that spread betting became uh, legal in the UK. It's uh, free of capital gains tax or any taxes as well, but only in the UK. So if you're watching this abroad, unfortunately, you can't take advantage of that. So I can have long term plays in the silver markets or in the metals markets or in the bonds or anything else as well, so that the gains are actually free of uh, tax as well. So all bubbles eventually burst. And uh, as I said in the beginning of this video, we don't actually have to wait for the bubbles to burst to take advantage because um, we have the facility to ride the current bubbles to the upside, as in the stock markets and the bond markets as, as well. And then, of course, we would say we can also play the, the silver markets and the metals markets as well, not just in the owning the physical, but also in uh, taking bets in the direction that they are likely to move. And for me, fortunately, I've been able to develop software that allows me to do this, whether it's uh, in the currency markets, metals markets or whatever, where the sort of manipulation that uh, we see in the markets is highlighted automatically as well. But the video isn't about uh, my software. It's about uh, letting you know that this is the sort of approach that uh, you can take and look at in order to take advantage of the forthcoming financial mayhem and uh, potential crisis of course as you'll see from the first video that presents the facts of what uh, is uh, stacking up and uh, waiting to unfold so really that's uh, about it uh, for this video there's not a lot more to say i will be doing more in these videos and showing uh, other ways to actually protect yourself so keep coming back also make sure that you subscribe uh, share, like and all the usual stuff with uh, YouTube videos as well and get the message out there that it's important to uh, uh, not only see what's coming but then take some sort of measures to be aware of what you could potentially do. And like I said again at the outset this is not a recommendation but just showing you how from the early 1990s uh, having been in the markets and analysed and traded them on a daily basis the other options that are available to take advantage of these unique situations and I mean certainly unique because we've never had QE on the level we've ever had in history and just to remind you as Ross Giles said this is a gigantic experiment in monetary policy which unfortunately I do believe and it's not just me but a lot of the other experts out there as well who can see that there is the potential for a major catastrophe en route which uh, I don't particularly want and neither does anybody else but what's important is that you put yourself in a position to uh, be hedged against it or take advantage of it. It's as simple as that. Okay, that's it uh, for this one. This is the end of part two. And we're going to fast forward three years, or there about two and a half years, when things start to fall apart. And so in part three, we're going to look at uh, how things uh, became unraveled in the financial markets. And by the end of it, we'll look and see if there is a way back or is this it is this the end of the fiat currency system that we've seen in the other two videos as uh, we know it? So as ever, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. I will see you there. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.